Hi, I'm Lindsay from Snail Mail, and this is Records in My Life. Thank you so much for being on the show. Oh yeah, thank you so much for having me. How's, how's the tour been going? All good? Yeah, amazing. Really but really cool. And your new album just came out. Tell us a bit about it, the title and, and all um, that good stuff. Yeah, uh, I spent about a year and a half writing it. Um, we recorded it in Woodstock, New York. Um, the title was just like, I like the, the fact that the word has a ton of different meanings. Um, and I, I just found out that the British people say it like, it's cool, like, oh, that's lush. Um, that's but awesome. I, I, I meant to, to be kind of like a description of the soundscapes and, and the narratives being like luscious. And I also just like the way the word sounds. And it's your debut, it, this is your debut for Matador, right? If that's I'm right. Correct? Cool, cool. And how did that whole, Tell us the story. How did the whole thing come? Was it an exciting thing, or was it not really exciting, or was it? Uh, it was definitely exciting. Um, I was in my senior year of high school. Um, I'd done like two tours and um, had a couple songs written for the new record, um, and and just things were going really well. There was a lot of like really great press and, and some cool tours coming up. And then uh, I had a, a, a couple really or quite a few really awesome label options um, and the people at Matador just ended up being like really really um, interested in a way that I could tell that they they cared about the music um, and the deal was good and I and I really like all the bands on there and I, and I felt like it could make snail mail into more of like f for me it made it feel like I could kind of do it like a day job and all the bands on there I have a lot of respect for and I think they all do it in a really cool way it being the music thing Totally, totally. What's your favorite? I mean, the album does have a great history. Like, I'm mean, from Bell and Sebastian to Pavement to Yola Tango. So many good records. What, what What's your favorite? Um, what's one of your favorite albums off the label? Uh, I love You're Nothing by Ice Age. Um, Fantastic. Uh, I I have a really soft spot in my heart for every Kurt Vile record. Um, he's like one of my favorite guitar players. Uh, Liz Fair, obviously. Uh, yeah, I mean, Helium Helium is on Matador. Uh, Mission of Burma. The list goes on. Was there an album that started, that really <clears throat> influenced your songwriting or really wanted you to make pick up a guitar and, and start writing? Uh, probably Loaded by the Velvet Underground. Yeah. So that album is not that's some, it's something you still revisit on a regular basis, oh, yeah. or yeah. I actually just got the vinyl of it. It was like one of those days where I was just like walking around the record store, and I, uh, I know it's like every record store has like a new pressing of it, and I, I saw it, and I was like, this would just be so amazing to have, just because of how much I love it, and every song on it is so good. It's definitely like a beginning to end, listen through, buy on vinyl situation. So give us the scoop. This show is about educating people about albums. Give us something about it. Is there an album by a young band or someone you've stumbled upon recently that we should all be listening to? Oh, yeah. I, uh, I saw this band from Australia called RVG at South by Southwest. Uh, and, and they are amazing. It's like insane. It's super, uh, really like cool guitar playing and like really awesome songwriting and the lyrics are like really in depth and tight yeah and which album would you not could you not live without uh, uh, probably, <laughs> it's a tough one yeah New, New Mexico by Oppenheimer analysis probably that yeah. was quick you knew right away yeah that's, that's like one of my amazing. favorite records I just immediately thought like, I, th I listened to it like um, like when I drive to try to stay awake. And so I think I literally couldn't live without it. Because whenever I'm like nodding off, I'll turn it on. And I'm like, I cannot, everyone will be asleep in the car and I'll be driving the van and I'm like, I need to make sure, like, keep everybody alive. And when was it? Do you remember the first time you listened to it? Yeah, uh, we were crashing at a, f a friend of our agent's house in. I think this might be another story originating in Florida, somewhere in Florida. And we were talking about minimal synth stuff. Um, and he suggested I checked it out, um, or I check it out. And 
And yeah, I remember checking it out like instantly, like in the car on the way to the next show, and I was totally blown away. That's yeah. awesome. That's the best way to discover music by complete. Yeah. So let's do, thank you again for doing this. Let's just do two more quick ones, and then cool. we'll let you go back. What's what's the first album, and don't be embarrassed by it, that you bought or streamed uh, or? I know, I know the first show I ever went to, like first like big concert was Hilary Duff when I was five, and I want to say I. I bought her CD, but I think I just borrowed my sister's all the time. But I think my first CD that I bought was an all-time low CD. And I think I got it like at PacSun. Or, or maybe like Hollister. I think I got it at Hollister. Oh, that's awesome. If, if my memory serves me correctly. <laughs> I had no idea that Hollister sold uh, sold music. That's correct. I might be wrong. Yeah. I, might, I might have like a memory of carrying it from Hot Topic to Hollister <laughs> to buy a Hollister tea or something, but I either got it at Hot Topic or Hollister. That's great. And let's do one final one. What's, okay. What for you is a flawless record? 1992 Deluxe by Princess Nokia. Easy. Fantastic. And we like to ask all our guests for a word of, some words of wisdom or advice. Okay. Yeah. Uh, a word a word of advice I think would just be to only only create art if you really want to and and for yourself and because creating art is something that is fun and um, and and all like external forces are not worth worrying about I think like if you if you're too excited by validation, then it, it's like detrimental. And if you're uh, getting bogged down by people being like, I hate this, it's also detrimental. So yeah, make art because you like it or or because you feel like you can contribute something to the world and, and uh, everything else is pointless. Well said, thank you so much. Yeah, Best of so luck with everything.